welcome to credence science weekly current affairs session in this video we are going to discuss about the various karnataka current events which have happened in the third week of august let's discuss the various events which have happened in the third week of august so firstly we'll look into the various details of the honorable chief minister's address during the independence day celebration so this is very special independence day because it is considered 75 years of independence the major highlights of this speech were the chief minister has announced 25 lakhs to the martyrs who lost their lives while serving the nation or battling in the battlefield protecting the nation for them 25 lakhs has been set aside and a government job will be provided for the family kin apart from that the 250 crores will be allotted for the schools for the toilet constructions to enhance and speed up the implementation process by august 15 2023 all the government schools will have a clean hygienic environment with a proper working toilets then the next aspect is vidyanidhi scheme which has already announced by the government of karnataka this scheme has now been extended to include the childrens of the landless laborers earlier this scheme was extended to farmers weavers fishermen and taxi drivers now this scheme has now been extended to the childrens of the landless laborers the chief minister focused on 3 e mantra that is employment education and empowerment and the upliftment of the downward class other backward class and the scst should be the objective of the government so this are the various highlights which the honorable cm has made during the independence day speech moving on to the next aspect it is the dg yatra so dg yatra is a contactless paperless seamless processing system which has been establishing in phased manner to become to make the aviation industry as a central ecosystem for the paperless contact or e governance system so this has been introduced at the kempegowda international airport in bangalore in delhi also it has been introduced now it has been introduced in the Bang so that it uses the biometrics the face biometrics and the token will be generated which will help in seamless clearance at the check in points with regard to the gate clearance and also boarding of the flight all will be done through the contactless paperless system which will be most efficient and effective both for the aviation management as well as the passengers so this is considered as a landmark initiative so now it has been doing the trial run so that the people or the passengers can get uh, accustomed with various changes what are the changes that the civil aviation can bring in for more effective implementation of this program this is termed as dg yatra so this application is developed as that standards defined by the world wide web consortium so it has all the features such as self sovereign identity verifiable credentials and all privacy and threats which can pose a harm to the privacy all have been addressed here so this has been implemented in the phased manner it will be implemented across all the airports in india in coming times so moving on to the next aspect it is with regard to the the honorable ex chief minister devaraj jaras so why it is in news because the government has celebrated the 107th birth anniversary the birth celebrations of devaraj jaras devaraj jaras is considered one of the most important personality of the karnataka political history he is the one of the greatest chief ministers of karnataka who has made enormous contribution towards social justice the various contribution he has made from land reforms to the free food distributions to the so many any social upliftment schemes he has been known as a person who is responsible for bringing the downtrodden people to the mainstream so in order to remember the contribution made by the sri devarajaras 107th birth anniversary was celebrated so what was the special about this celebration because earlier there is used to be only one day celebration now the government has decided to celebrate a three day celebration has been set aside for the devarajara celebration and it has been taken to all the 31 districts all the 31 districts has to celebrate and it has set up a committee okay three member committee to identify the persons who have made good contribution for the social upliftment and social cause to select them and award them the district devarajara award so these are the special things for the present year the state devarajara award was awarded to m annaya kullul uttur he is a doctor from mangalore who has done a great service to the community based medicine and also the health sector the various contributions he has made to the health sector by providing what you call it as the affordable health to the poorer sections of the society and focusing on the community health he has been chosen for the dcs state level devarajaras award moving on to the next aspect it is with regard to the decision taken by the government of karnataka to reserve 2% of force quota in various government departments as of now only the police and for 
forest department has reservation with regard to the sports quota which have not been included in the other departments in order to bring the reservation to the sports persons presented india or karnataka in the international forums and are represented karnataka or india in the international forums and brought some good recognition to the sport to encourage the sports in the rural areas and also in other parts of state this reservation system has been brought in the government of karnataka announced this initiative during the event where they were felicitating the recently winners from the karnataka with regard to wrestling gururaj pujari who won the bronze medal in the weightlifting and also the gaikwad the women cricketer who won the silver medal in the recently concluded commonwealth games so this announcement was made by the government of karnataka the next thing is the mudol hound so it was in news because kenan research and information center has recently handed over the two pups of mudol to the allied protection force of india that is spg special protection groups the spg protects all the vvvips including prime minister and blood relations and the ex prime minister so in order to give protection to them this allied force has been set up this allied force for the first time has taken mudol hound for its operations earlier various organizations of the central and state governments including the crpf including the cisf the army and also even the bsf have taken the mudol and they have been very well satisfied with the performance of this inspired by this spg has taken over the special features of this mudol hound is that it is a sight hound mean it can see the distant object from a far away distance so as per the observation any slight changes from far away of 2 km it can sense the changes and it is very agile fast moving and very quick to adopt to the changes in the climates so it is very what we call it as more suitable to the india's subcontinent and it is very disease resistant so it is adaptable to the various climate conditions it is disease resistant it has a major advantage plus added advantages which made this breed to get adopted into the various allied forces now the spg has taken over one more thing is the kenna research information center is the first agency in karnataka to win make in india for indigenizing the process of induction of dogs so most of the dogs it will breed is the indigenous dog as the history goes mudol has traced back its history during the early 20th or late 19th century when the kingdom which is ruled under the provinces of mudol where this breed has been first time recognized it is actually a cross between the afghanistan caravan breed and the local breeds afterwards the kingdom which ruled the area surrounding mudol has given importance to breed this unique type of dog that is called as mudol so moving on to the next aspect it is regard to the obc reservation so what is its obc reservation obc reservation especially for the pancham sali lingayat sect due to the demand from this sect the government has established a three member committee headed by subhash b adi to look into the issue of the reservation as the present situation the pancham sali comes under 3b category their demand is to be included into 2a category so the government of karnataka has established the three member committee headed by subhash b adi and it has given a term of references to look into term of references is it feasible to bring in this sect under the 2a category committee was looking into the various report the high court has asked the panel not to proceed further because of a petition filed by the some litigants saying that whether the executive does not have a power to set up the term of references and dictate the term of references to the panel whether this particular set comes under the different category or not so now the high court has set aside means asked to maintain status quo now they are going to pass the uh, case to the higher division bench the division bench is looking into the pros and cons and then the verdict will come out so from the examination what I have to remember is which committee has headed this why they are opposing it so for the mains point of view also from the reservation angle you can add points here so moving on to the next aspect it is with regard to the 65th annual commonwealth parliamentary conference so this conference is held at canada halifax in canada halifax in canada so it is a conference of parliamentarians representing the commonwealth countries so commonwealth countries are those countries which are once ruled by the united kingdom so as of now we have 68 commonwealth countries from karnataka our honorable speaker vishweshwara hegde kageri and the ex chairman of the legislative council shri basraj horatia are been a part of karnataka delegation which will attend the commonwealth parliamentary conference to understand about the various working conditions of the other commonwealth countries what improvement we can bring into our system or anything 
which we can adopt from their system and exchange of ideas among the different parliamentarians helps us in better functioning of our parliamentary system moving on to the next aspect so it is with regard to hindustan aeronautics limited the hal which is a psu public sector undertaking with its headquarters in bangalore has decided to open office in Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital of Malaysia. Both the governments have signed an agreement and HL has decided to establish its office in Kuala Lumpur so that it can better improve the aviation business by servicing, making services to various aircrafts which Sukhois and other aircrafts which it can be better serviced and better give service to these aircrafts in the South Asian countries and with major emphasis to Malaysia and other surrounding countries. So these are the various current events which happened in the third week of August. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching this video.